We're actually so incredibly early that we can't even fathom what this movement will turn into. Instead of seeing 8 billion people slowly getting poorer every single year in one of 160 different currencies that are all dropping in purchasing power at different rates, 8 billion people can start to get richer and richer and own a piece of something that, you know, digitally is technically, ethically, economically sound and, and can last for the next thousand years. Natalie's journey through the Bitcoin space goes beyond the numbers and charts. It's a deep dive into the revolutionary Bitcoin network and its intersection with global economics. Stick around as we uncover the moral dimensions of Bitcoin, the potential for a fairer and more inclusive trade, and why Bitcoin might just be the key to a brighter future for 8 billion people. This is not your average crypto talk. This is a narrative of empowerment, hope, and the relentless pursuit of freedom. So Natalie, how do you envision Bitcoin changing the landscape of international trade? And in what way is it a global leveler for humanity? Well, I mean, this, this also touches on, on why Bitcoin is a moral form of money because it's completely voluntary. So you have this global network where everyone can come together and they're not coerced to participate in any way. And there aren't intermediaries that are just there to sort of take a cut for no actual productive value like we have with these foreign exchange rates and you know these companies that are just literally making money because one currency is being transferred into another. It's bizarre, it's, it's nothing productive added to our actual GDP. Um, so I think that it will allow for, for trade to happen in a more fair and inclusive way, where again, no nation state, no company has some sort of special outsized advantage that they're able to then capitalize and leverage and, and, and grow so that it, it creates even more of a, of a monopoly. Um, so I, I see trade as actually being a more level playing field because no matter where you are, even if you're, you know, whether you're a, a, a massive entity or a small, you have to play by the same set of rules. And right now it's sort of a rigged game where some people get an advantage, a very special advantage, and certain nations certainly do, at the expense of others that haven't been able to develop and grow as much as maybe they could. It is literally accessible to eight billion people. This is the first form of property that 8 billion people can own and, and they can custody it themselves and no one can take it from them. And so instead of seeing 8 billion people slowly getting poorer every single year in one of 160 different currencies that are all dropping in purchasing power at different rates, 8 billion people can start to get richer and richer and own a piece of something that you know, digitally is technically, ethically, economically sound and, and can last for the next thousand years. I mean, I think it's actually incredible. And I, I love what Bitcoin mining is creating in terms of opportunities to build infrastructure for, for energy so that small communities can start to pop up and become productive and add value to the global economy in really remote random places where, you know, Bitcoin miners are location agnostic and can hook up to some waterfall or a volcano and all of a sudden create a, a, a small community that can can start to trade and, and exchange value with one another. I think it's super inspiring and um, and I, I, I can't wait to see what Bitcoin does over the next you know 10, 20 years as more and more people adopt it because so many of us think, oh, I wish I was in Bitcoin earlier and we look at the price and ev everyone feels like they're behind. We're actually so incredibly early that we can't even fathom what this movement will turn into in the same way that in the early 90s, none of us really imagined what the internet would do to all of our lives, how it would transform the way we communicate with one another, how we do business and how we order things online, pretty much that's the, the only way we do it now. Uh, Bitcoin's going to do the same thing, but for financial value, for, for our money, and that's going to be really exciting and inspiring. Within this current system of fiat and debt, we've we've made it so that many of these nations are entrapped. They take on debt, we basically excavate all of their natural resources and we impoverish these nations and make them completely dependent on the system. And then when they can't pay back the debt, we issue them new debt at even higher interest rates. And a lot of that, a lot of that money gets funneled into you know, corrupt agencies, corrupt royal families, and we can kind of break that cycle. And I, and I have a lot of hope that Bitcoin will help nations that have been developing for you know decades and decades and can't can't develop fully because their money is so broken and lynn alden talks about this in broken money and i think it's it's one of the things that is my biggest hope for the bitcoin network today's video is sponsored by stamp seed 
Don't store your Bitcoin in cold storage without stamping your seed phrase on an indestructible titanium plate. Stamp seed is fireproof, rust-proof, impact-proof, and easy to hide. It has no loose parts and will give you ultimate peace of mind that your Bitcoin is safe and sound for the long term. Click the link in the description below for 15% off your stamping kit. Welcome to Bit Intelligence. We are committed to bringing you top-notch Bitcoin-only content, twice weekly. Doing this is quite a lot of work. If you are enjoying it and you'd like to support us in making more of these videos, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. If you are willing to go a step further, consider contributing to our Lightning Wallet on Geyser to help us get the funding we need to keep bringing you these videos. You can also join our channel here on YouTube for as low as $2.99 per month. Okay, back to the video. You can't cheat energy. No one can just push a button and create extra energy out of thin air. You have to follow the laws of thermodynamics and math. And so you actually have to expend energy in order to try to, you know, compete for Bitcoin to mine a, a block. And I think that that's amazing because in pretty much every other consensus mechanism and every other economic system, it tends to centralize, especially over time, and there's a small group of people who are at the top who um, can control the system, can change the system, can inflate the system, and that's been the core of the real problem. This The energy component, proof of work, guarantees the fact that no one has control and everyone around the world has to play by the same rules. Thank goodness for the Bitcoin Standard by Saifedina Moose. That book was really transformative for me. It lifted this veil off my eyes and I, I literally, I think I had multiple aha moments during it where I just sat back and I was like, oh my gosh, this is why I've witnessed some of the things I've witnessed in my adult life and my childhood. This is why things are so broken. Why didn't I learn this in school? That was one of my thoughts too. Um, after that, I just tried to get my hands on every book, every podcast, every YouTube video I could find. And one of the reasons why I started Coin Stories is because I've always loved human interest stories. I've loved learning about what makes people do what they do, where did they come from, what obstacles did they overcome. I also love rags to riches stories because I find them to be really inspiring. And I couldn't find that information. I, I was getting great information about what Bitcoin is and the potential of the network. But I was curious about the people behind Bitcoin and what drove them to have such conviction and what did they do in their you know, pre-Bitcoin lives. So uh, I decided to start interviewing people about that and then it, it turned into my full-time job. I'm not a technical person. I don't have a, you know, a master's in finance. So I think for a lot of people, my podcast also provided this sort of entry point that was more approachable and, and more simplified in the messaging um, because you can go really far down the weeds and get very technical. And I love to do that now that I'm more comfortable with Bitcoin. But when people are just starting out, I think they need sort of just that zoomed out, more simplified picture. And I hope to provide that for more and more people because we've orange pilled a lot. You know, we've got millions of Bitcoiners, but we need billions of Bitcoiners. So I hope to be someone that, you know, people come to the space, they might feel originally intimidated by the network and the technology, and they realize that, oh, actually anyone can learn it because Bitcoin is for everyone. When I was a reporter, I started to get to a point where I lost a lot of hope about the future. Again, I was reporting on a lot of the issues that we hear talked about in media today, especially with this election coming up. People feeling frustrated, people feeling left behind, people feeling like they can't afford a home, they can't afford their groceries, they can't afford retirement, they can't afford their child's education, they can't afford childcare. And, and so I saw a lot of people struggling and with my own financial situation, I kept working harder and harder and my income was never enough for me to be able to save enough to buy a house, to start to accumulate the types of things you need in order to plan really for the long term. And so I started to look into the future and I thought, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna make it? That's why I really relate to those videos that I see on social media where people are literally just going on TikTok and Instagram and they're just venting. They're like, why does everything cost so much? And I can't make it. My, my, I work 40 hours a week, 50 hours, 60 hours. I can't make it. I need multiple jobs. I can relate because, you know, I, I wasn't I wasn't too far off from a lot of those situations at one point. 
but I didn't understand how money worked. I didn't know about Bitcoin. And when I learned about it, it was like this massive infusion of not just knowledge, but empowerment and hope that I can actually change my situation. I can actually start to accumulate something that no one can take from me and that no one can dilute and no one can destroy and no one can just print more of. And it gave me a lot of hope that I will be able to secure my future. And it's not just about me. I want it ultimately so that I can have a family and share that. Like a lot of people, they work so, so, so hard. Some of them do dangerous jobs and it's all for their families, you know, so that their child can live a better life than them, so that they can help their communities and their loved ones. And so again, like Bitcoin leads to a lot of just hope and security and possibility. And, and that's what I think will ultimately help the most amount of people. They need more economic hope. Natalie's insights have taken us from the moral dimensions of Bitcoin to its potential to break the cycle of economic inequality. We've explored the profound impact on nations, communities, and individuals, showcasing Bitcoin as a tool for empowerment. If you found today's discussion as compelling as we did, make sure to catch the full narrative on Coin Stories. There, Natalie continues to unravel the human element behind the headlines, bringing you stories of conviction, resilience, and the relentless pursuit of economic freedom. We'll see you next time.